Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Tears Spooky, and I want to check out some Attack on Titan stuff, because, uh, yeah, like, the anime's finishing this year, I didn't read the manga, uh, it's nice to just catch up. I think, like, these explained videos help recap certain things as well, so that's pretty cool. And then I was thinking of checking out this one, then I'm going to check out the Warhammer Titan Explained, and at some point, totally not Mark's Attack on Titan is genius, and then when the anime ends... I then plan on watching his review and then the final chapter review as well. So, yay, mixing it up a bit. But this one is called The Great Titan War and the Nine Titan Shifters Explained. So we're going to get into that. And make sure you check out my Etsy shop. I've got t-shirts and hoodies there that I've designed. And uh, Patreon down below. One thumb up. Get your name in the end of the video. How is it going, everybody? Too spooky here. And what? before I even say anything else, let me warn you that this video is going to have tons of spoilers for Attack on Titan. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to have anything about the ending, because I looked at when this video came out, and this came out quite a bit before the manga ended, so... You know, hopefully, uh, yeah. And this video is mainly for people who are caught up with the manga, so make sure to proceed with caution. Okay. In this video today, we are going to be explaining the nine different titans of Eldia, or the nine different titan shifters as they are more commonly known. Okay. We're going to be talking about how they came to be, what they are and what they're capable of, along with any other information that I feel is necessary to relay. I will also be leaving out small bits of information, of course, but hopefully after watching this video, you guys will know everything that you would ever need to know about them. Cool. Because I'm dumb, so it's always nice to have a little bit more understanding of, of, of things. After recently reading the manga, I personally found myself understanding what was going on, but only to an extent. There were still many things about this topic that I was rather confused about, so I decided to make this video to not only clear up my own confusion, but also help others understand who may also be just as confused as me, Thanks, or maybe bro. even a lot more confused. I mean, I've not read the manga, like I said, but still, you know. There's a lot going on in Attack on Titan, man. And before we actually get started, I just quickly wanted to warn you that my pronunciation is literal trash. Like so always, I'm likely I'm going to mispronounce well. multiple names or phrases. <laughs> but without further ado, let's begin with how the Titans came to be in the first place. Sweet. It all began around 2,000 years before the current timeline with a girl by the name of Ymir Fritz. Yeah. This girl just happened to stumble upon what is called the source of all organic material, or or essentially what we would call God. And through this chance encounter, Ymir was given the power of the Titans. Whoa. After receiving this power, Ymir, along with the rest of the Fritz family, ruled over the Eldians, which are essentially Ymir's race of people. Uh -huh. Now, we don't exactly have clarification of what Ymir's Titan powers were exactly, but after 13 years of ruling over the Eldians, Ymir died. And after Ymir's death, her Titan powers were passed down to nine different individuals individuals. And isn't that how long that they get to use the abilities for as well before they pass away and then it's passed on to someone else, isn't it? And as you can probably guess, each of these nine individuals ended up with a different Titan ability. And we will of course go over what these nine Titan abilities are and what they do after we finish our little history Sweet. lesson. But these nine individuals would become known as the subjects of Ymir. Something else that should also be mentioned is that any Titan shifter or member with royal blood is able to create more Titans, which are the mindless everyday right. Titans that you see throughout the series. They are able to create these titans by injecting any Eldian with their spinal fluid. And as far Which is a very- how did they, you know, how did they find that out? What was the first time they did that? <laughs> like, hey, let's just try something different today. What? Do you mind just getting some juice out of our spine and then just plugging it in that guy's neck there? As far as we know, Eldians are the only race of people who are able to become titans through this method. So both Ymir and the nine titan shifters also had their own army of regular titans, and could just create more whenever they wanted. Also, yeah. for another individual to inherit titan shifter abilities, they need to first be turned into a titan, and then eat, and then eat the person yeah. who currently has the shifter ability. Just so you guys know. But anyways, after these nine individuals received their titan powers from Ymir, they decided to use their newfound titan powers for war. 
and they decided to wage war with the, the Marleyans, world. which are the race of people from the continent of Marley. And as you can imagine, with the Titan powers at their disposal, the Eldians were able to completely destroy the country and take yeah. it over as their new ruler. I mean, yeah, the Titans are pretty damn powerful altogether, like, just must have annihilated stuff and renamed the nation to Eldia. Later on down the line, the nine Titan shifters eventually separated into nine different houses, essentially, while the founding Titan, which we will talk about later, maintained order throughout Eldia. And while the founding Titan was maintaining order, the other eight Titans began to fight among each other, and this would go on for hundreds of years. Eventually, the founding Titan was inherited by the 145th King of the Fritz family, which is a very significant individual. But before him, every single person who inherited the Founding Titan would just maintain order throughout Eldia. But the 145th King decided to just completely avoid the rising conflict in Eldia wow. altogether. It's like, ah, I'm just doing this different. And decided to move the capital of Eldia to the remote island of Paradis. After the king's absence, there was of course no order in the land of Eldia any longer. And during the confusion, the remaining people of the Marlian race decided to start a civil war with the Eldians. And during the civil war, the Marlians somehow managed to capture and gain control of seven of the nine Titan Damn, Shifters, which would give them a huge advantage in the war, oh, yeah. and eventually lead to their victory. And this was known as the Great Titan War. Now while this Great Titan war was happening, across the seas on the island of Paradis, the 145th king used his powers of the founding titan to create the gigantic walls that our main characters now live behind. After all the Eldians who wanted to live inside the walls were inside, the 145th king sealed the gate and sent a letter to the remaining members of the Fritz family in Marley, stating that they were renouncing all war, which would end the great titan war. Now wow. back in oh. Marley, <laughs> the Marleyans were now the rulers once again, uh -huh. and allowed the remaining Eldian people to continue to live there, but they were forced to live in designated areas as extremely low-class citizens. Essentially, they were being segregated, yeah. and they were looked down upon as inhuman or filthy-blooded by the Marleyan people. Now, because an individual with Titan-shifting abilities can only live for 13 years after inheriting the ability, the Marleyan- Right, so I was right about that. Cool, cool, cool. I was waiting for some sort of confirmation there. Cool government decided to select specifically trained Eldian children to inherit the Titan shifting abilities every 13 years when the current Titan shifter sense. is about to die. After I mean, it sounds mad, but it makes sense to have some sort of system in place so you're not going to, like, lose it. You know what I mean? Yeah. For inheriting the Titan shifting ability, they would be known as Honorary Marleyans, with all the freedoms and privileges that come along with being Marleyan. These individuals are known as Warriors. Now fast forward a little bit, in the year 1845, Marley sent out four of their warriors to Paradis on a mission to not only wipe out the Eldian race, but also to recapture or obtain the founding Titan. Yeah. And as we know, that didn't really plan, work man. out so well. But now that we've covered the history of the Titans, I think it's about time we talk about what each of these nine Titan shifters are and what they are capable Hell of. Yeah. The first and most important Titan is known as the Founding Titan, which is currently residing in inside Aaron Yeager. The first and most useful ability of the Founding Titan is its ability to control other Titans. Yes. To what extent, we don't know for sure, but we've seen that Aaron was able to use this ability to command other Titans to eat Dina Yeager in Titan form, and also attack the Armored Titan. Yeah, we also so know sick. that the 100... It was so sick, it was like, what's going on? Why is it just stopped? 45th King used this ability to command countless colossal titans to harden their bodies to create the walls. And according to Rod Reese, if the power was used at its full potential, the user could kill every single titan in existence. The second ability of the founding titan is memory manipulation. As far as we know, this ability can be used to change or remove memories completely. Yeah, it's like a weird time travel thing, isn't it? It's like when, um... Aaron basically, like, tells his dad to do what he did. It's, it's like, whoa, what? We have no clue if they are able to restore these memories as well, although it seems likely that they could. The extent of this ability is also massive. 
Frida Reese used it to simply remove her visits to Historia from Historia's memories. Historia. While on a much larger scale, the 145th King changed the memories of everyone within the walls so they wouldn't remember anything about the world's true massive. history. Absolutely. However, for some reason, certain bloodlines are unaffected by this ability. One example being the Ackerman bloodline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because the Ackermans were unaffected and therefore could know the true history of the world, they were targeted and eliminated by the government. The next ability is something that resides in all nine of the Titan Shifters, so after this I won't be bringing it up again, okay. but this ability is Memory Inheritance. The other eight Titan Shifters are only able to inherit fragments from the previous owner or owners, while the founding Titan is able to remember everything clearly from every single person who has ever inherited the, the founding, founding Titan's Titan, abilities. Right, yeah, yeah. The only problem with the founding Titan would be the fact that only members of the the Reese bloodline or the Fritz bloodline are able to use these abilities effectively. For instance, Aaron is unable to use any of the Founding Titan's abilities, aside from a few random occurrences where he was able to, and he is also unable to remember anything from the previous Founding Titan aside from a few tidbits from Frida Reese and his father. Whereas members of the Reese family are able to remember everything from at least the 145th King and likely up to Ymir Fritz herself. So because Aaron is not a member of the Reese or Fritz bloodlines, the Founding Titan remains somewhat dormant in his body, and he is not able to control or knowingly use any of these abilities. Asi kind of different now though, isn't it? Mm, but yeah, considering when this was made, it's okay. Aside from Ymir Fritz, the former individuals we know of who possessed the Founding Titan's abilities are the 145th King, Mr. Reese, who was the father of Rod and Yuri Reese, then Yuri Reese himself, then Frieda Reese, then Grisha Jaeger, and now finally Aaron, Aaron Jaeger. Jaeger is the current holder of the Founding Titan. The second Titan is known as the Attack Titan. So, I guess that explains where the name Attack on Titan came from. Doesn't anyway, matter. this Titan is also currently residing in Aaron Yeager. So, I guess that means it's possible to have two Titan shifting abilities? Oh god, yeah. Yeah, we learned that. Maybe? Not much is known about this Titan's specific abilities or what is unique to it, but the Attack Titan is a 15 meter class that is very muscular and has some great physical abilities, endurance, and is capable of using different martial art moves in combat. After training in this Titan form, Eren is also able to keep his intelligence while in this form, and finally after eating or ingesting some sort of armor serum, Eren is able to harden his Titan body to not only only seal the wall in Wall Maria, but also harden certain aspects of his body, such as his fists, to strengthen them even further. Yeah. The former individuals we know of who possessed the Attack Titan's abilities were Aaron Kruger, Grisha Jaeger, and then Aaron Jaeger as the current holder of the Attack Titan. The third Titan is known oh, as the, the Armored Armor Titan. Titan. This Titan is currently residing in Reiner Br Braun. This One of the most interesting characters in the series, I think. Like, the way he was having problems up here and flip-flopping, and the way he just revealed who he was was just like, wow. And then now it's, it's, oh, it's just constant struggle moments. And then that moment where he just, like, jumps in on the uh, off the ship and then... Oh, this one is pretty self-explanatory from the name, but essentially the Armored Titan is an Armored Titan. Yes. The skin on this Titan is hardened over multiple points on the body to give it an extremely protective shell, which is able to protect Reiner from many different things like steel blades or even cannon fire. Now although this protective shell is very powerful, I mean until they come up with those like anti-armor shell things that was so sick to see well, it can still be broken as seen during his fight with Eren in yeah. attack titan form or due to different military grade weapons there we go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this armor defense is not absolute now although having this armor leads to a great offense and even better defense it does have one downfall which is that it is impossible for reiner to move quickly while his whole body is covered in armor it is possible for him to shed his armor completely or in 
segments to help his maneuverability and speed. But in doing so, he is also leaving his body exposed yes. and susceptible to damage. Yeah, yeah. So he does have to be very careful with his decisions. So far, the only known person to have ever possessed the Armored Titan is Reiner. The fourth Titan is known as the Colossal Titan, Yo. or the Colossus Titan. This Titan is currently residing in Armin Arlert. The Colossal just, Titan is by far- He just doesn't use it, man. Just doesn't. I'm hoping when the anime comes back, that is just gonna change, because they are fighting Eren now. I think they all have to just go, all on- Titan mode. ...are the biggest titan we've seen so far, being around 60 meters tall. But the main ability <laughs> of this titan isn't just being super fucking tall. No, its main ability comes from its ability to emit steam. Yeah, this steam is steam. extremely hot, which prevents anyone from getting close to the colossal titan without getting severely burned. The user is able to decide how much steam is emitted at once, and is even able to completely evaporate their titan body into steam if the user so chooses. Now considering the Colossal Titan is also really goddamn tall, it can also pack a pretty deadly punch or kick. But one of downfall of this Titan is the fact that its massive size makes it very slow. Oh, yeah. And the other downfall is prolonged use. With extended use, the muscle mass of this Titan will slowly dwindle away, until eventually this Titan is nothing more than a skeleton, until inevitably disappearing. And while the body is dwindling away, it is also more susceptible to damage. The only former individual we know of who possessed the Colossal Titan's abilities was Bertolt Hoover, mm -hmm. and now it is currently possessed by Armin Arlert. The fifth Titan Ooh, is known titan. as the Female Titan. Oh, please give us an explanation on this one. Now, before I continue, I have one question about this. Because it is known as the Female Titan, does that mean it's impossible for any male character to- Oh, so is he not actually- Oh, mate. Mm. ...inherit its abilities? I doubt it, but what the hell would it be called? Yeah. The Female, but actually Male Titan? The Transgender Titan? Jesus Christ, I need answers. Anyway, this anyway. Titan is currently residing in Annie Leonhardt. The female Titan, uh, I mean gender fluid Titan, is around the same size as the attack Titan. Mm -hmm. And although it is not as strong in terms of physical abilities compared to the attack Titan, it is pretty darn close. But this Titan does have two main abilities, although neither of them are really unique compared to the other Titans. The first ability is similar to the founding Titan in the fact that it is able to control yeah. normal Titans, but nowhere near to the same extent. Basically, what the gender neutral titan does is scream, and this scream attracts normal titans of all shapes and sizes yeah, to, to her location, her, though, yeah. where they will then attack and devour its body whole. So essentially, the scream alerts all nearby titans to its location simply it's so really they can eat it alive, it? Like, which yeah. is really only good for gathering titans all in one location, because otherwise it's basically suicide. Yeah, so maybe really instead of the mind. female titan, we should call it the Screaming Titan. Yeah, let's go with that. Right. Anyway, the other main ability of Hardening. the Screaming yeah. Titan is its ability to harden its body, but not to the same extent as the Attack Titan or the Armored Titan. It's actually better than both of them, because Annie can harden her body up to diamond level, which makes it pretty much then, impossible like, to break, away, and it? also strengthens her attacks exponentially. So far, the only known person to have ever possessed Damn. this Titan is Annie Leonhardt. The sixth titan is known as Jaws. Jaws. This Titan is currently residing in Galliard. Jaws, or the Jaws Titan, is a rather small Titan compared to the other Titan shifters, mm. which may seem like a downfall at first glance due to the sheer size of the other Titans. But being smaller in size allows the Jaws Titan to be much more agile and extremely fast in terms of speed, giving it an advantage against slower and larger Titans. But this Titan's main strength comes from its namesake. It's 
jaws. This Titan apparently has very strong teeth that are capable of dismembering Titans and even breaking stone with a single bite. Galliard's rendition of Jaws is also apparently able to harden parts of its body, at the very least his fingers, whereas we never saw this ability with the previous owner, Ymir. Yeah. The former individuals we know of who possessed Jaws abilities were Marcel, Ymir, and now it is currently possessed by Galliard. The seventh Titan is known as Cartman. Wait, Make a hold on. Sure, is that actually the name of this thing? Cartman? Like, I get that it can hold things on its back, like a cart, but come on, guys. Yeah, it's a bit lame. Screw you guys! I'm a guy. Oh my god, like, did you see the, um, the Funko Pop design for it? It looks so bad. Like, I've never seen a Funko Pop where I've just gone, I would never buy that. <laughs> This Titan is also called the Quadrupedal Titan. So I mean, I guess that's a little bit better, right? Mm. Anyway, this Titan is currently residing in Peak. Now, not too much is known about what exactly this abomination can do, but it seems like its main ability comes from the fact that it moves on four legs rather than two like pretty lame. much every other Titan. This allows it to move faster than most, but it's still nowhere near as fast as the Jaws Titan. Being on four legs- It is cool how they utilize it like- Alright, like- It also allows it to carry things on its back. That's cool. But the Funko Pop just does not look good, man. That looks pretty tight. And it's cool that they utilized it. It's like, right, I'll donate something like this that's so lame. Kind of awesome. Just put guns on it. Just make it like a moving tank. Okay, cool. Which is likely why it's called the Cartman. But other than that, this Titan really doesn't have too much going for it. A little side note is that once Peak turned back into a human after being in Titan form for such That's a long a period long of time, time she had some it. trouble learning how to walk on two legs again and needed some assistance to do so. So it looks like prolonged use of this Titan also has its Why drawbacks on the person using it. Straight. So That's far, my... the only known person to have ever possessed this Titan is Peak. The eighth Titan is Ooh, known the as Titan. the Beast Titan. This Titan is currently residing in Zeke like Jaeger. Unfortunately, titans. like the Cartman Titan, not too much is known about the Beast Titan. We also don't have any exact measurements on how tall it is or how tall it is estimated to be, but when it first appeared, it was mentioned how abnormally big it was, meaning that it's likely taller than most other Titans. We've also seen that with such a large build, this Titan is exceptionally strong. We've seen that it can easily crush large boulders with its hands and then launch them Mate, at speeds faster insane. than cannon fire which can easily completely level buildings with ease other than that example we really haven't seen it do too much in a one-on-one -on -one fight so a lot of its abilities are still a mystery we've also seen that this titan has the ability to control normal titans similar to the founding titan yeah, yeah. but of course not to the same extent however unlike the screaming titan the beast titan is able to to actually, actually control, control what the titans yeah, yeah, yeah. do by giving them verbal commands. Although this could just be because Zeke has royal blood within him, but we have no clarification if I that has anything to do with his ability whatsoever. So far, the only known person to have ever possessed this titan is Zeke. But because Zeke is almost at his 13 year limit, the beast titan is currently going to be inherited by Colt Grice. And the final ninth titan is known as... Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, well, unfortunately, the ninth Titan hasn't been revealed yet. Uh, so there's really okay. nothing I can tell you guys about the last one because we have no clue what the hell it is Ooh, or could possibly be. So I apologize for the little clickbait title up there considering I couldn't deliver explanations so of all nine Titans. All right, cool. But I promise, once the ninth Titan shifter is revealed, I'll make a video about it for you guys. Although one thing I can can say is that we know from the Great Titan War that Marley was in possession of seven of the nine Titans. So the other two Titan shifters that Marley didn't have control of are the Founding Titan, which was in possession of the 145th King, and then the Attack Titan was MIA. Unless... 
The Attack Titan was originally under Marley's control, and they eventually just kinda lost it, which would mean that the unrevealed Titan was the MIA Titan all along. So it's quite possible that either the unrevealed Titan Shifter is currently under Marley's control, and we will likely see it soon, or the unrevealed Titan is still MIA. And maybe it will show up at a later date. Just a little food for thought so you guys don't walk out completely empty handed. But anyways guys, that is nine, or I mean eight of the it's nine close. Titan it's Shifters close. explained, close, yeah. along with the Great Titan War, which was probably the most confusing part for me personally. Yeah. So I hope you guys now have a better understanding of the Titan Shifters and the history that surrounds them. Thank you all so much for watching this video today, and if you enjoyed this one and want to see more Attack on Titan content on this channel, make sure to drop a like and comment down below what kind of videos you guys would like to see. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified the second those videos come out. Also, feel free to follow me on any of my social media, links in the description down below. Uh, follow me on Twitter. And if you guys cannot get enough of that too spooky content, well, make sure to click here for an explanation explanation of Nen from Hunter x Hunter. Good and video. if that's not Good doing video, it for one. you, we'll click here for 10 facts about Saitama from One Punch Man. Mm, As always, sure thank you all one. so much for watching, and I will see you all soon with a new video. Anyway, this Titan is currently residing in Piek. The fuck kind of name is Piek? Anyway. That was cool. That's interesting. So the Warhammer Titan hadn't been introduced yet, so that's the next one. And the Warhammer Titan was only passed down specifically through royalty, wasn't it, if I'm remembering correctly? Because the original person they thought had it didn't actually have it. It was a... Um, yeah, but we'll wait until we check out Two Spookies video explaining it. Yeah, <laughs> That was cool. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, check out my Etsy shop. Links in the description there for t-shirts and toys that I've designed. And thank you to my... Patrons, if you want to have your name at the end of every video I upload, link in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar more for the IRS support channel, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you guys for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys all you guys next time.